everybody. Welcome to the Keep Going podcast on Hugging the Cactus. I'm Andy Signar, and I'm so excited for this episode because I get to meet somebody I've been watching online and I'm a huge fan of. Guys, meet Gothic, Gothics, uh, a.k.a. Vanessa, but Gothics is her brand name. Welcome to the show, Gothics. Well, hey, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm happy to have you. I want to hype you up a bit because I've been watching you online. I've found you. If I could buy stock in Gothics, I would because I can tell this girl's going places. Uh, she's been online for a while. You've been a Twitch streamer, right? You're now on YouTube. Uh, you've been doing a lot of streaming and hosting and stuff for the years, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I've been streaming on Twitch since about, like, 2018 and just kind of recently started paying attention to YouTube. But before the streaming, I've done, like, I've been on like reality TV. I did some modeling for a while. Like I, I'm one of those people that I like to try all the things. Yeah. Well, good for you. Uh, well, I want to play the clip that where I found you. Uh, there was a clip where I found you online. That's where I discovered you. It was a clip about cancel culture that I thought was just brilliant. And so uh, here it is. Good. I have it here. I was worried it wasn't going to show up. Uh, but I thought with your permission, I ha we have it. I, I wanted to play this clip what I found of you. So people who don't know you perhaps can discover why I fell in love with you right away because you're just, you're really good with your words. Uh, but let's play this clip. You said cancel culture is not a form of accountability. Let's put it in as malicious practice by learning how to properly communicate our grievances. Okay, so cancel culture as a form of accountability. I can't believe I need to make this video, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, accountability doesn't need to be public. That's the first thing. Public humiliation isn't necessary to hold someone responsible. You decided that upon yourself, so let's get that out of the way. The second thing is, this is Twitter we're talking about. This is one of the easiest places to fabricate drama, okay? So if we're talking about accountability here, at the end of the day, accountability is just coming from a bunch of streamers that don't know the full story. So, and the thing that I find interesting about that is a lot of the people that I see participating in cancel culture tend to be the same folks who preach about social justice. So if you are someone that is passionate about equality and fairness, I find it very hard to believe that you think publicly crucifying someone with little to no evidence would seem like a logical thing to do. Furthermore, Bad opinions are subjective. What's deemed problematic to you isn't gonna be problematic to somebody else. And that's why a lot of cancel culture mobs result in the accuser gaining more attention, more publicity, because at the end of the day, your criticism is just that, publicity. But you know what also happens in regards to cancel culture? Suicide. Yeah, suicide. A very common result of public humiliation. If you care about someone, you're going to set them up for success by putting them in a position to rehabilitate themselves. What do you think inciting an online mob is gonna do? What do you think? You think it's gonna help them? You think it's gonna make them feel like a better person after being publicly berated like that? Is that really what you think? If you are on the receiving end of cancel culture, and this is coming from someone that has experienced it myself multiple times, it chips away at your dignity. It chips away at your self-confidence, at your mental health. So if that's the goal, then by all means, label it as accountability and be on your way. But that's not what's happening, okay? What is reality and what you think you're doing are two entirely different things. Cancel culture will never be an option for sustainable accountability all you're doing is bullying bravo first of all i have to say that was just so nice to hear someone smart sort of put it out there so eloquently which i thought you did uh and uh people know my story but i want to get to know your story of where this all came from uh but i just to echo it's so true i mean public shaming is a is a thing they used to do in the dark dark ages to people yeah like people just don't realize like what that the mental effects that has on people and for someone for this group the people out there who are so progressive to think that this trial by social media and destroying people's lives via tweets is sort of is actually doing the right thing they're just so lost in their way a great book for all of you who haven't watched john ronson's uh, so you've been publicly shamed has been documenting this for a while it gets into a lot of this uh even before sort of the cultures we've been in and now uh, but so bravo for sort of putting it out there. And I, I think the other thing you said really eloquently, like this, this idea, Sarah Silverman recently talked about this idea too, of like, if we don't help educate and sort of figure out how to have someone take the, their own accountability, right? We are, they're going to be outcasted and they're going to become even more worse of a person. And they're going to be exactly what the community doesn't want that person actually 
potentially turn into what that uh, that community doesn't want them to be versus actually trying to right the, any wrongs they might have done or learned from uh, and instead by and, and, and instead what they're doing is they really are bullying someone to the to the fringe uh, to a point where they might be suicidal and, and give up their lives so Bravo for everything you said. I just wanted to put it out there. So I want to thank you. I, we can talk about this, but I, I'm curious, like, where did this come from? Like, what happened to you to sort of uh, not only have you sort of clearly you you, you were canceled. I, I know you've you've talked about it, but like you've clearly also grown and learned from that and become a wiser person. I've seen, but perhaps we can start from the beginning. Like, what happened to you to have to learn all of this? Yeah, totally. So um, with my situation, I was, you know, back when I was on Twitch, you know, streaming consistently, I, I call it like my streaming prime because I was bringing in some crazy numbers at the time. And, you know, I was just doing my thing. And uh, I had heard that The Little Mermaid uh, was doing a live action movie and they announced that Ariel, who has been historically white, is now going to be black. And a lot of people, including myself, thought that was a little bit weird because, like, I personally, I don't find, I, I find that as sloppy seconds if I'm talking about, like, black empowerment. I don't want somebody's leftovers, you know, give me a brand new movie. Uh, and so, you know, I, I took to Twitter and I saw a lot of uh, people, mainly white people, being accused of being racist just for having reservations about this character being uh, race swapped, and I don't, you know, I, I don't think that's racist. And I, and all I basically did was I said, hey, can we just stop throwing the race card around? Because I don't find that, uh, you know, making these claims about a person with just because they don't favor uh, this direction that the movie is going in is, is a good enough reason to label somebody like that. Um, and uh, black Twitter, I don't know if you are familiar, mm, yeah. <laughs> but Black Twitter was not very happy about my statement, and that uh, kind of is what pretty much made everything spiral out of control. And uh, it was like a week long of harassment. Uh, you know, just like, you know, just p people sending me hate mail, DMing me, you know, photoshopping photos of me. It was it was just ridiculous all over this one thing. And with me, the, the thing that was really bothersome during that experience was how little people actually wanted to have a conversation with me. They just wanted to yell their projections about my character without actually sitting down and understanding my point of view, which was really unfortunate. And I feel like a lot of people that in, get involved in cancel culture can relate to that. Like that there's never an opportunity to hear the victim side of the story. It's always like, let's get that guy and that's it. Um, so that was one of, that was the, the main time that I got canceled. I've gotten canceled several times after that. Um, but with that video in particular, um, do you want me to go into like why why I made that video? Yeah, I mean, sure. Because it seems like you've learned from it, right? You've grown from it as a person, which I have in my own story as well. But like, yeah, what, what brought you there? Yeah, so um, that came after the fact. So after I initially got canceled, I got very depressed, like very, very depressed. Like I would, I would even admit like borderline, you know, suicidal. Um, and uh, I, it was really upsetting to know, to see that a lot of people who came to my aid during that moment were like, it's okay, you're gonna get through this, we're with you, we got your back. It was really upsetting to see not even a few months later, these same people who had my back were actively participating in online mobs towards other people. And I tried rationalizing with them on several occasions, like, make it make sense. How do you say you care about me as a person but then you will go ahead and and do the same thing to somebody else that you don't know anything about. And then after that, it was clear to me that nobody's quite grasping the, the negative impacts that cancel culture can have on someone. And that's how I knew it was a bigger problem than I was making it out to be because I've, I've seen a lot of people that I've spoken to in the content creation sphere that have been canceled. A lot of them don't recover. A lot of them don't go on and make content anymore. Some of them just quit. You know, it's just, sometimes it's just not worth it. Um, so that's pretty much what sparked that video. Yeah, well, it was wise. I mean, I, and it, I, it brought to because I've been watching you. For those that don't know, I, let me do a quick plug mid show. I mean, you can follow her over in Gothic TV, uh, Gothics TV on Twitter as well as on YouTube. And there you do a show called Subtweet This, uh, which people can go find, uh, where you basically have a lot of these conversations, more difficult conversations. Was this sort of care, this person that's sort of standing up to this idea and these outrage mobs? I mean, I imagine that came from your own cancellation of sort of realizing and seeing your friends do it to others that you sort of wanted to stand up and fight back for people who maybe didn't have that voice. Is that am I am I gathering that correctly? Oh, yeah, that's that's totally right. So like one of one of the reasons I made actually the, the main reason that I uh, made the podcast and originally it was just going to be me. 
Uh, but then my boyfriend and one of my streamer friends decided that collectively we were going to do this together just in case if another mob had happened. Um, it, I wouldn't be taking the brunt force of whatever cancel mob I would get. Um, so our idea was initially to just interview people who have difference of opinion from ours, uh, and then we can talk about them in a civil uh, setting without yelling, without subtweeting, without cancel mobs and all that. Um, recently, we've actually had to reformat what our show is about because we've been at it for a few months now and we can't actually get someone on the show who uh, disagrees with us or the people <laughs> who have been on the show who slightly disagree with us are now angry that we've invited people on who uh, have drastically different beliefs than them. And I'm like, that that's totally defeats the purpose of what we were setting out to do. So now we're kind of just tackling it from the angle of let's get people on the show who have uh, very diverse opinions and beliefs and positions that you no normally don't get to hear. Um, you know, for example, like I could we, bring- We a, lost a, your feed. Do you have your, your video uh, went off? My video's gone? Yeah. Oh my goodness. What in the- Heck? staring at me twice which was, i figured I, I was hoping it would click back in but I'll have to, oh no oh there, wait oh, there what? we go there we go now you're back that's so weird <laughs> sorry so weird. you were saying you were saying <laughs> so no like uh you know i basically our whole goal is to uh put people on the show who always get demonized for their different opinions their different thoughts and let them have a platform and try to humanize them a little bit um, and I think that might be working a little bit better than initially trying to get somebody on the show because I feel like people just get a little bit intimidated mm -hmm. like you guys are going to attack me if you bring me on your show Yeah. oh yeah I know um, that well we have a show called Change Our Minds and we've tried that with, and, and no one wants to come in and actually fight with us and that's the problem I, but for those who know me will see why I'm connecting to Gothics here because she's doing a lot of stuff I've so uh, bravo good for you to, to be out there and, and doing these platforms uh there so I, I wanted to get to the topic at hand which is sort of through all you've been through and i was watching one of your subtweets this uh where this idea came up about how to trust people in this era of clout chasing uh and i and i, I, I when i was pitching you to come on the show as i watched you i thought you know this could be an interesting conversation because i can relate to that too and i think a lot of people can uh there's just sort of this new world we live in this new order right where it's like everybody's out to get you know for number one which i think look we got to respect that. Of course, everyone's got families to, you know, to support and things, but I think it's on social media, it's gotten worse where anybody will stab you in the back and, and use inside information to get a like online uh, to potentially help themselves, which isn't really putting food on the table. It's more just for their own selfish interests. Uh, and so I, I, and I was discussing watching you, you were discussing with some of your, your hosts there. I, I imagine this is a, this is a problem you've had in your, in your life. Uh, I mean, I know I have, but is this, is that fair to say? Oh yeah, I have. I've had like waves of like turnover rate from people that have come into my life when I started getting into content creation. I want to say like from when I started in 2018 on Twitch up until now, I feel like I have maybe a handful of the same folks still in my circle. Out of all the people that I've encountered, it's always just been this like you know, turnover of people that claim to want to be my friend, claim to want to be in my life, but then it, when it boils down to it, it's for some superficial reason or they have an ulterior motive, like I'm going to hook them up with my connects to a sponsor or I'm going to hook them up with like, you know, them coming on my platform and then, you know, using my clout essentially for, for them. And uh, it, I feel like I've gotten a little bit better at figuring out what the warning signs are, but I'm still not entirely sure on it. You know, sometimes I still, it still hurts hearing that, like, you know, someone that I thought was a friend decides not to associate themselves with me uh, for one reason or another. Or, you know, it still does hurt to find out that some of these people uh, did not actually really care about me as a person. But um, I think overall, I'm getting a little bit better avoiding those situations now. Yeah, I mean, it comes to me, it's just like, it's loyalty is so rare in our day and age, right? It's like people don't want to uh, risk their own careers or brands, let's put it, right? Brands, especially to associate with someone who might have some stink to them. And it's right. sad when it's hard to find people who will stand up against that and be like, no, look, my friendship with this person shouldn't have anything to do with my content and your ch choice to watch my content. Uh, and, and, and it's rare to see people that will stand up for people who are going through the mud. Um, but yeah, I, so I relate to that. I mean, obviously, I, I, I had a lot of people who turned on me, but as I've tried to rebound and, and find new, more real friendships, I, I, for me, it's loyalty, right? It's like, it's, it's 
people who will actually have your back, even when they disagree or you say something unpopular, they don't disown you for it or try to send you to the wolves on social media. They say, well, look, I just don't agree with that, but that's their right to say it. I feel like it's so rare for people to have the guts to be able to like, yeah, I think differently that person, but I'm still friendly with them, uh, especially in the age of politics right now. I mean, do you have that problem too? <laughs> Uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> I, um, okay. So I had, uh, up until recently, I actually, uh, dismantled a giant community that I had been building, uh, through the, the Twitch, you know, community of streamers. And I actually recently nuked it because, uh, word got out that my political affiliation was not that, uh, of everyone else's, uh, within the streaming sphere. And, uh, it became all of a sudden overnight, I was just this terrible person and people just started leaving the community in waves and spreading that information to other people. And again, nobody has actually sat down and have a conversation with me yet. Right. It's just projection. So I ended up getting rid of the community entirely. But yes, that was the most recent thing tied to, you know, the political climate that I can say was, uh, it was very interesting to see. I, yeah, it is what it is. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, just so people know, like you, you have, you've started to put out some sort of, I would say, dare, more daring takes on things uh, on your YouTube channel, which I find refreshing. I, I, I always prefer someone who's going to put out there and challenge stuff uh, and offer stuff that maybe we haven't heard anymore, uh, as particularly why I'm no longer a Democrat, which if you actually watch the video, it doesn't really get into a lot of the politically, you know, it doesn't mean you're straight Republican. I just think in my case, I relate to it. of just like I was a Hollywood liberal. And I despise them now. I see that, you know, I, I've also despised Trump. And it's like I see now sort of the extreme of either side is so dangerous. But there's still this sort of, especially this Hollywoodness, because I come from there of just like, well, no, if you're, if you're, if you are, if you are conservative, you are the devil. You are a racist. You are a terrible person. And I, like, I moved to Florida and I really, I realized, no, they're not. <laughs> like, there, there are a lot of normal conservatives. Like, it's really, it's really weird how, and I, I can say it because I've been there, but that Hollywood, California bubble is so strong and they're so protective of like, oh no, wait, you, you've, you've talked to someone who voted for Trump? Get out of here. I can't associate with you because everyone else disassociate me. And I, I hope and think that'll eventually stop happening, you know, as, the, as hopefully politics becomes a little dis less divisive in the next four years. I hope and maybe it won't, but maybe we can start sort of people can wise up to the two party system being flawed and all these other problems and realizing that, look, half the world voted for one person, half the world voted for another person. There's clearly a divide, you know, divide in thought. We have to have communicative, you know, communication or it's going to only get worse. And, and then, then what happens? Right. So, uh, I applaud you for putting your, your beliefs out there and having them out there. Cause I think we need to all unite together and put these types of conversations out there to not be afraid. But yeah, I mean, so is politics something you want to get more into, or is that something you were avoiding for that reason? How, how have you, are you glad you put yourself out there in that way? So, so personally, so politics isn't a, isn't a topic in particular that I'm just like, oh, I get so excited about politics. It's really not. It's just, I don't like when people tell me what to think and what to believe. I'd prefer to uh, take whatever sources I have and, and formulate my own conclusion. Um, and the only reason that I, I basically announced that I'm not affiliated with the uh, Democrat Party, which I'm not a Republican either. I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I haven't like aligned myself officially with anything. Um, but the reason that I took to YouTube to come out like in, in that way was because I saw a lot of people labeling conservatives or Republicans as bigots and racists and things like that. And I, I can relate to that myself because one of my best friends, uh, when she voted for Trump in the first term, I turned on her. I was like, you're a racist. And I actually didn't have a valid explanation. I just knew that everybody on the TV said this orange man was bad. So anybody that votes for this orange man is also bad. So I figured, hey, in this social climate right now, I feel like being a young black woman, maybe people will listen to me on this topic when I say that conservatives are not actually bigoted or racist like everyone seems to think. Well, I, let's correct that. Some are, but so are some, some, are. Demo so are yes. some Democrats, right? That's the reality. Yes. Like, bo both sides have <laughs> those bad apples in them. 
Yes, yes. And there's bad there's just bad people. And I just don't like saying this particular group are the bad co- guys and these are the good guys because we know that's a lie. Right. So I, you know, I just I wanted to do it to just kind of like get people thinking like, OK, this girl went through this experience. Maybe there's some truth to what she's saying. Let me, you know, take the initiative and research some more on my own. You know, and that's a, that's what I hope too. when people watch my videos. They don't take what I say as gospel. It just inspires them to actually do the work themselves. Well, it's interesting because I followed a similar path as you, and I, I've noticed now because I'm I still I don't consider myself conservative. I'm pr- I probably lean more liberal in places, but I'm I'm discovering I'm I'm finding myself again, but I'm discovering myself to be more independent in that middle centrist or whatever they call. It. I, I, I'm tribalist, I guess is how they also is the other b- buzzword people use. Uh, but what's interesting is in as soon as I sort of pushed back and asked these questions, I've found that conservatives are surprisingly more open to those dialogues and being friendly with liberals than liberals are with. Conservatives conservatives it's a really interesting dynamic because even though i lean more towards that thinking i've i've noticed a lot more of my liberal past friends and people they don't want to t- attempt to have those conversations i'm just curious have you noticed that too by chance oh yeah i mean every time we try to book people for our podcast we can never get people on that don't want to uh, state their opposition it's always it, it's we always get people uh, who are not a part of that side, who seem to be a little bit more open-minded and, and want to have conversation and enjoy, you know, debating and things of that nature. Um, even like with me just having conversation just in real life with someone who may be on that side, I find that they're very quick to just shut down the conversation and they they get like, you can tell that they get very like they get riled up quicker than if I were to speak to someone that is conservative or Republican or whatever. Yeah, it's fascinating to me. I mean, so getting back to sort of the trust, the trust of people, I feel like that's the the politics almost feels like a big part of it in that people are afraid to go against their politics, especially uh, I guess it, it goes both ways. There are conservatives I know who, who are set in their ways and they're they're turning off Fox News now because they have to follow Donald Trump and. I, have a, I think that's, I, I, that sounds like a cult to me. Uh, and so my problem is like, I, I, I've called out a lot of liberals, but I'm, I'm starting to now call out a lot of the uh, uh, more conservative Trump voters who are like, it's all fraud. I t-. It's like, it's you, now I, I have, I call them out and then I can see my own base is starting to get annoyed with me. Well, no, Andy, you got it. And I'm like, no, I, I told you from the beginning, I play both sides. I, I will hear both sides. And if I see hypocrisy on either side, I'm going to call it out. Uh, but do you think it's like a, is, is the, pol- is it, is it that political leaning that you think makes people, uh, is that separate from the clout chasing, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Do you feel like that's part of the reason why, you know, we can't have more unity? It just the, my belief is so much, I, I, I'm so hardened to my belief, I can't hear you. I can't, I refuse to hear you. Uh, or do you think it's still a, a little bit of like, I can't associate with you because others won't forget, you know, wh- which do you think it is? I think it is, I think it's a mixture of both and, and I have experienced both because um, I noticed that it definitely is, I, you know, I can't associate with you because I'm, you know, people are going to look at me weird. Uh, but also a lot of people um, seem to just be very stuck in their ways. And I think that for, the more I have conversations with people, you know, in the comments when they're looking at like, for example, my critical thinking video, it's, it's really crazy to hear that a lot of people don't even understand the concept of critical thinking anymore. It's like they can't fathom having a difference of opinion. They just take your opinion and they just say like, oh, well, this equals this instead of like actually dissecting what it means for this person to do this thing. But with the other with the other scenario that you gave, I find that um, I, I do find that it is people don't want to associate with someone who may be uh, viewed in a negative light because of their political affiliation. And we've seen with cancel culture that when you can't cancel someone that you're actually trying to cancel, they cancel the people around the person. Um, And that's happened to me multiple times. You know, people will slide in each other's DMs and say, hey, you know, gothics is uh, with the other guys, you know, you should unfollow them, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really, Weird. So this is why, like, I feel we might actually in society get to a place where we could all coexist and be happy and everything. But I, I feel like part of that is uh, becoming a little bit more innovative with how to address this because the people that involve in this kind of like exiling mob rule, online mobs, and all that stuff, it's it, it, they're learning. They're 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 coming up with new tactics to kind of shame the people that don't agree with them. So it's like the other people, like me, I would think that. 
I, I would hope that my platform will someday help combat like cancel culture and this online animosity and even political animosity. Um, but it's it. It, it's going to take, I think, a bunch of people doing it instead of just like, you know, a few people here and there. Does that it, make sense? Yeah, Did no, I answer your no, question? It does. It does. It's well said. I mean, I think because I'm just trying to figure out, too, like, how do you how do we build trust, more trust, like people like us, anybody out there? How do you know someone is worthy of befriending and, and, and opening up to? I think we as personalities right online, we talk a lot. So people automatically feel closer to us, I would imagine, just because we put our, our opinions out there. So 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 vocally right but then at the end of the day like you have to have private friendships and relationships too the ones that count on and then how do you how do you how have you started to navigate that and and made sure that the person you're befriending more personally isn't out to go do that because that that's one of my biggest things i've noticed over the past you know as i've been rebuilding and growing and starting to regain some popularity again like i've had some of those people who who were using me who turned on me or used it to sort of yeah i finally got the chance to stab in the back and prove him he's a he's a hypocrite how, how do you protect yourself from those or how, how do we, what, what advice could you offer so um okay so like i said still learning process with this but um i think the first and foremost thing at least for me is i try to be as open as possible about my beliefs about the things that i like so that there's no surprises so it's not like oh my goodness did you did you find out that gothics uh you know is not affiliated with the democrat side anymore if i'm open about that there's not going to be no surprises about it anymore so at least i'm weeding out the people that are close-minded in that aspect so that's something that i've been doing Doing recently but then also I try not to get really close to new people I'm a very social person I um, in, enjoy having conversations with people but now when someone approaches me and like says like oh my god got I love you you're amazing I'm just like you don't actually know me <laughs> like right. you don't know me yet so it's a little bit of a mind game too with me understanding like this is an acquaintance this isn't actually a friend um, and also I try to just pay attention to what are the scenarios that this individual wants to spend time with me. Obviously, now everyone's at home. You know, my free time is like, you know, in Discord and whatnot. But how does this person actually want to spend time with me? Does this person want me to go on their show? Do, are they trying to do a collab or are they trying to uh, come into my space because they they want something out of me? So I just I just pay attention to people's behaviors. You know, like how often does somebody come into my live stream? How often do they make an attempt to just see how I'm doing? Or is the conversation always just business, you know? Yeah, that's a great one. I mean, I, I realized it was something I learned to piggyback what you just said. It's like when I was when I was doing my screen junkies day as executive and doing super popular channels, six you know millions of viewers and everything. I realized I was a bad friend. Like I was I was totally not checking in on people like I would just people were always coming to me. And I sort of was so on that top of the game that I sort of was like. Anytime I wasn't working, it was like, I'm going to go spend time with my family. And then it's like, there were a couple, you know, very close friends that I kept close to, but I realized I didn't sort of plant the seeds on other friendships that perhaps I regret doing now. And I think it's good advice of like, you know, you can't just call people to be on your podcast. You can't just call people to come do this, come do that. Uh, hey, can I, can you plug this for me? Hey, can you do this? That, that, that's not how you build a real friendship. And I think in this world of online social media, especially with us stuck at home, uh, it's, it's important. I think for all of us to remember, call your friends, check in on them, ask how they're doing. Listen. Uh, I think those are all things that we all need to, to be better. And so I, I, a good, good advice that sort of reminds me of things. I'm always still trying to work better on my phase two of my life is like the people that matter to me. I check in on them, right? I make sure anything you need, what, what's going on in your life, uh, which I think some people just don't, uh, make the time for because they're 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 in their own sort of lure because we're right we're all the heroes to our journey but then when you realize when you fall down and you and and people run away from you or or I didn't like this person there is that moment of you know the hugging the cactus moment where you realize man what did I do wrong where where am I guilty in this of what could I have done better uh, any other as we wrap up the sort of this conversation uh, anything else you can share in sort of that learning of sort of from the fall. Uh, what what mistakes maybe did you make that you have tried to do better uh, moving forward in this new you know rebirth of yourself? Yeah. So um, well, another thing that I can add to figuring out who actually wants to be involved in your life um, is also um, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> 
<laughs> Never mind. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to go back to it once it comes back into my mind. Um, but I'm sorry. What was the question again? Well, what have you learned in, 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 in having that moment of falling, right? Your cancellation and having the, the, the negative thing. You, I, yeah. we call, I call it hugging the cactus where like in my instance, I had to look in the mirror. It's so like, man, I did actually, I made some mistakes in my life or I could have done this better. I understand why some of those people aren't engaging with me or wanting to talk to me because I wasn't really that close to them. So I shouldn't be offended that they've turned away from me because we weren't that, we were more colleagues than friends. And so I've learned, you know, from that, like people that matter to you, re- tell them they matter to you. Talk to them, listen yeah. to them, ask them. Don't just ask them for favors. Make sure you do favors for them. Uh, is that what, what's a lesson maybe you have learned in sort of your, your fall? Yeah, so uh, one thing, okay, so now that we're in this digital age, I'm almost confident that almost everybody is going to get canceled at one point. It's, it's sure. just going to happen. It's it's good to just prepare for it. Um, and I've been canceled probably like four or five times by now. And the most recent instance, I still have some of the same people in my circle who were there with me during my first cancellation. And I think that is so valuable. That, that tells me like you're in this for the long haul and, and it doesn't intimidate you that people will slide in your dms try to get you to disassociate uh from hanging out with me and things like that so uh i think you know pay attention to that and also i i kind of went through the same thing as you did when i was kind of in my prime when i was streaming on twitch where i everything was work 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 and i would ignore a lot of my friends i wouldn't reach out to them and i'm just a really awkward person in that nature where like i just don't uh you know reach out to people I, I'm a weird friend. I'm weird. Like I, I'm one of those like there, there friends. Even though I care about you, I'm still just weird at displaying that I care about people sometimes. Yeah, nothing wrong um, with that. That's, a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, so that's something that I'm trying to get better at is just uh, check up on the people like you mentioned, and especially the ones that have been around for all of this cancel culture that I've dealt with, uh, because those are definitely valuable people to have. I think. Well, uh, I, it's been awesome getting to know you. Uh, you're welcome on these channels. Anytime you want to plug whatever you got going on, I hope we can we can build a good acquaintanceship, to, to, maybe eventual friendship. Uh, but I appreciate you coming here, being honest with me. Uh, guys, if you haven't uh, already gone and subscribed to her, please go do it. I'm going to plug you and show all your, your plugs here. Uh, here we go. So check her out on Twitter at Gothics TV, uh, as well as on YouTube at Gothics uh, and uh, Gothics TV. And you can follow her on Twitch, uh, Gothics TV as well. Uh, actually, it's just Gothics there, right? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. No TV there. Uh, and uh, Subtweet This is her other show you can go check out. Uh, I'll put all those links in the description below. Uh, Vanessa Gothics, so amazing to have you on here. I hope we can continue these conversations. If you want to hear amazing stuff from her, go follow her on all those platforms. She's always got some hot takes. These are hot takes. It's a bad word. You have some real takes uh i feel is a better way right you, you, you're, you. Not, you're not afraid to be real and, and challenge stuff and just have a real conversation I, I hope uh more of us can do that that's why i gravitated to you i was like man she's really was that just to wrap up was that is that a choice you're making now to sort of be more real to 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 be more vulnerable and open yourself up to those conversations because i often find that's what gets me clicks and so it's this yeah. like weird thing of like how much do i want to open up for those clicks uh but in order to succeed you got to be vulnerable and you got to be genuine is that is that something you wrestled with it's not even for clicks i mean the clicks definitely help uh but i i wanted to be more vocal and raw with what i'm saying because i personally feel that society's become a little bit more soft where Mm -hmm. you can't even deliver something uh, using particular words because oh the way that you said it was so offensive but do you acknowledge what the message was that i just said or are you only focusing on how uh how much it sounded bad, you know? So I figured just get it out from the get. This is what you got. And if it offends you, then I don't, I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) Yeah. It's like Cobra Kai. The world needs it again. There's too many, too many, uh, too many soft people out in the world uh, related to that show. Uh, But well said, uh, great having a conversation with you guys, uh, with you guys go follow her on all the links in the description below. Uh, That's all we have for this episode of keep going. We got lots more. We're here weekly. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. 